Welcome back to my channel. Many of you, okay, three of you, have commented on the interiors I provide in some of my structures, and I appreciate your feedback. So for today's very short video, I thought I'd share with you a technique I am using for a more detailed interior. This is a paper mock-up of my current scratch build project, which is a hoist winch enclosure slash tool shed for a small mine on my layout. I wanted to model the large doors in the open position, which meant that a viewer would be able to see a significant portion of the interior. That in turn meant I needed to provide more detail than I might normally provide. Fortunately, building the paper mock-up gave me an idea. Clever Models, the same company that makes the paper model I used for my mock-up, provides textures. These are two-day printed images that give the illusion of three dimensions, especially if you don't look too closely. Two of those textures are shown here. Since the exterior of my building would be corrugated metal, I reasoned that the interior might consist simply of a wooden frame with corrugated metal behind it. The effect I wanted was to fool a viewer into believing that he or she was looking at the inside of the corrugated metal sheathing. I started by building my foundation using dry stacked stone sheets by Monster Model Works. I painted and stained the foundation to get the effect I wanted. Next I added the floor using a piece of 1 64th inch plywood. I printed the wood plank texture from Clever Models on a sheet of self-adhesive paper. Then I applied it to the top side of the floor and glued the floor in place. I cut the walls from mat board. This is the heavy board used to create picture framing mats. With the walls cut out, I printed the corrugated metal texture on self-adhesive paper and applied the texture to the inside of the walls. Next, I stained a supply of scale 2x6 lumber and glued it on top of the printed texture to simulate the building framework. I chose 2x6 partly because this is an industrial building which needed heavier framing and partly because I wanted the framing to be prominent. Notice that the framing extends to the edges of the right-hand wall, but not to the edges of the left-hand wall. This is so the walls will fit flush when I join them at right angles. I cut a strip of 30 thousandths styrene, 14 scale inches wide, to use as a spacer between studs. This ensured I had a consistent 16 inch center to center dimension. Use glue sparingly here. You do not want excess glue marring the printed texture. My structure has one wall, which is partly interior and partly exterior. For this wall, I used two different textures, corrugated metal and wood planks. I cut the wood plank texture at a 45 degree angle to simulate wood sheathing applied at an angle. I wanted this wall to look like it had been an exterior wall until a building extension was added later. At that time, the corrugated siding was removed and wood sheathing was applied. That's why there is a window framed on the wall with no window in it. With my walls built, I glued them to the foundation, keeping everything square. At this point, I was pretty sure that this would create the illusion I wanted. The missing wall will not have any framing applied for two reasons. First, this wall would only be visible through the window and door on the opposite wall so no detail was necessary. And second, the additional depth by created by adding framing to the door opening would have made the wall too thick. Instead, I applied framing around the inside of the large door opening. I still applied the corrugated metal texture to the fourth wall on the inside. Once the shell was complete, I added a loft area to serve as an office. I painted some simple wooden shapes to simulate office furniture, added a chair, a clock, and a figure. Later, this area will have an overhead light. I glued a couple sheets of paper to the desk. These are absolutely not visible from the outside, but I know they're there. The loft railing is a detail part from Tichy Train Group. I added an assortment of crates underneath the loft to add some more interest to the scene. Since this building will house the winch for the mine hoist, I knew I would need a believable model. This would be the star of my interior scene. Working from photos of old mine winches, I built this model from a variety of styrene shapes from evergreen scale models. Creating the pawl gear was fun. I had to glue the gear teeth on, one by one by one. 
When the model was finished, I painted it with Rust-Oleum Painter's Touch 2X Flat Red Primer and gave it a black wash to highlight the details. I rubbed the gear teeth with the tip of a pencil to simulate bare metal. And here is a photo with my winch in place. I added a figure who should be standing by to stop the winch whenever needed. Finally, I added interior lighting. This will be necessary so the viewer can see the interior when the roof is added. Above the office, I used a lamp reflector from Titchy Train Group and an SMD warm white LED from Amazon. Above the main floor, I used a pendant style lamp from Evan Designs. I hope this has been useful. I apologize for the lack of live video. I have not recorded any portion of this build on video, so I had to rely on still photos. As always, I love to read your comments. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.